If you're looking for a super easy to make pasta, then look no further than this Bucatini Amatriciana. It's incredibly classic and you can absolutely do this right from your home. Amatriciana is part of the four original Roman pastas. You have ketchup pepe, you have carbonara, allegricia, and of course, amatriciana. The best thing about each of these is that all of them are five ingredients or less. Love these classic recipes because they're all simple to make and they're always delicious. This one has just a little bit of prep, so we're gonna get started on that. Sound good? Let's cook. We're gonna grate up some fresh pecorino cheese. Just note when you do grate it, it's a super hard cheese, so it can break apart and it's totally fine. Just use those pieces later, no big deal. I like to do this on the fine grater side of my grater. If you want it a little bit bigger, totally up to you. And I always do it on parchment paper so that it's easy to transfer. These shreds look absolutely perfect, so let's simply set them to the side. And if you don't already have a block of pecorino, fine, don't sweat it. Get the pre-graded one from the grocery store. Or if they don't even carry pecorino, Parmesan will be a fantastic substitute in this recipe. Here's what we're gonna do next. I've got some canned San Marzano tomatoes from the San Marzano region in Italy. They're super sweet, super delicious. We're gonna add them right to a blender and to make sure we get all that juice, just add a little water to the can or the container, whatever you're using, and swish it around, pour it into the blender. Gonna put the lid on. Now, I don't want to completely puree these. I want these to be just a little bit chunky. So I'm gonna do it on the absolute lowest setting of the blender. It's okay if there are a few seeds in there, it's not gonna alter the flavor in any way. Now, set it to the side. And just like the cheese, the same thing goes with the tomatoes. If you can't find San Marzano tomatoes, it's okay. Use whole peel plum. If they have crushed, use what you have to make this work. All you're doing is popping it in a blender anyways. The San Marzano are just a little bit sweeter, a little richer in flavor, and make the recipe that much more delicious. Now, the most classic meat to use in an alamatriciana is guanciale. And it's nice and fatty, it is cured pig jowls it's got great flavor and it's really going to enhance this pasta so what i like to do is cube it up into small little bite-sized cubes you could even julienne it if you wanted to it's completely up to you just make sure they are bite-sized pieces and go ahead and set them to the side on a plate and i'm going to sound like a broken record here but if you can't find guanciale because it is sometimes difficult to find even from italian markets you substitute for pancetta. If there's no pancetta, you use prosciutto. If there's no prosciutto, then you use really thick cut bacon. Make this recipe work for you. It's gonna be delicious because it's so simple. Grab everything and we are going back over to a cooktop. I've got a nice large skillet over about medium heat. We're gonna start by adding in that cut up guanciale. And what we wanna do is just cook this like bacon. We're gonna move it around and we wanna brown it up. It is super fatty and a lot of that fat is gonna render in the pan. Don't you dare discard that. That is gonna act as so much flavor into this pasta. This looks perfect. Nice and toasted, still tender, excellent. We're gonna deglaze with a little bit of white wine. This is completely optional, but incredibly classic in a recipe like this. We're gonna cook it down maybe two minutes on medium heat. Just want to get some of that wine incorporated into the guanciale. At this point, it looks excellent. We're gonna add in some of the tomatoes. There'll be some left. Go ahead and freeze it or use it in another recipe. It works great. We wanna stir in the guanciale fat with the tomatoes that we pureed just to make sure everything is incorporated. And then, of course, I'm gonna hit it with some crushed red pepper flakes and keep it warm. Now that the sauce is done, it's time to cook our pasta. Bucatini is classically what would be used in an amatriciana recipe. If you don't have that, don't sweat it. Let's just use spaghetti. And let me say this, what a fantastic time to learn how to make homemade pasta. You get so much from such a little pasta ball dough, you won't believe it. It's easy to make, it stores and freezes well. But you know what, if you don't want to do that and you just have a lot of dried pasta lying around, please use it. It's gonna be fantastic. Don't worry about keeping it so precise. We're all about flavor here. If we have to adapt a little bit, totally fine. Now for cooking the pasta. I've got a large pot of boiling water. I'm going to season it with salt. I was always told that the water should taste like the ocean. I'm not going to add in my fresh bucatini pasta. Remember, please use what you have and you'll be all good there. 
Fresh pasta cooks in maybe two to three minutes. Bucatini, because the noodles are bigger, probably take more around five to six minutes. Once they are done, if you're not sure, try them. If they're nice and tender and perfect, you're good to go. Let's drain them, add them right into the sauce. Now we want to put in some of the shredded pecorino cheese, maybe about a half cup or so. And then we're going to mix everything together. The goal here is over low heat and we want the cheese to be melted into the pasta. Now, because the guanciale is salty and the pecorino is salty, before we season anything, I recommend just taking a little bit, try it out. Does it need salt? Does it need pepper because of the pepper flakes as well? To me, it does. So I'm gonna hit it with just a tad bit of sea salt, fresh cracked black pepper. We are gonna mix that in completely. It looks really good and I can't stress enough, make sure the cheese is completely melted and mixed in there. It will just enhance the flavor so much more. At this point, let's remove it to the cooktop and set it to the side because it's almost time to plate up. And it's like I say every single week, Comies, once you start understanding these little fundamental techniques, you can make anything. It's all about knowing these cooking procedures like how to brown up your guanciale perfectly, how to deglaze with a little wine to add flavor, how to get the timing right with cooking the pasta, all of these things. You apply them all to your everyday cooking and your family and your friends are gonna be blown away. Better than anything at the restaurant, better than anything at the store and it's right from your own kitchen. Now, of course, let's plate up in slow-mo. Using tongs, or sometimes I use a carving fork to sort of wind up all of that delicious long pasta that I made, just gonna serve it on a plate. You can serve it in a bowl. To me, this pasta was meant to be consumed in the masses, so I've got quite a bit here. I'm gonna finish it with some more grated Pecorino Romano. You can save the leftover for a later date. It's a hard cheese and will last quite a while. Check out this beauty. I can't say it enough, so easy to make and so delicious. Do this tonight. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, and definitely check out this video because it is so good. I'll see you on there.